If g is a graph of order n with minimum degree delta of g that's greater than or equal to n minus 1 over 2, then g is connected. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving this sufficient condition for a graph to be connected. This condition is not necessary for a graph to be connected, so not every connected graph has this property, but if a graph does have this property, it's most certainly connected. As always, I recommend trying to prove it yourself before we move on with the lesson. But in the hopes that you've done that, we'll move on now. So we're going to use another theorem to prove this one. This fun little theorem states that if the degree sum of every two non-adjacent vertices in our graph is greater than or equal to n minus 1, that's 1 less than the order of the graph, then g is connected. This is an easy theorem to prove, and if we use it, it's super easy to prove the above theorem that we're actually more interested in. I've already done a lesson proving this theorem, so I'll leave a link to that in the description, but just for completeness, since it's an easy proof, we'll run through the proof of this result in yellow really quick in this lesson. And remember that n is the order of our graph g. It's the number of vertices that g has. So to show a graph is connected, we just need to show that any two vertices in the graph are connected by some path. So if we take two vertices, u and v, from our graph, and those two vertices are adjacent, so uv is an element of e, the edge set, then certainly u and v are connected. They're connected by the path of length 1 going straight from u to v. So then, all we have left to do is to assume that the two vertices u and v are not adjacent in the graph and show that they also must be connected. If u and v are not adjacent, then of course we can use our hypothesis about non-adjacent vertices that the degree sum of u and v, so the degree of u plus the degree of v, must be greater than or equal to 1 less than the order of the graph, greater than or equal to n minus 1. This directly implies that u and v must both be adjacent to some common vertex we'll call w. So uw and vw are elements of the edge set. We know this is true that there exists some vertex w that's adjacent to both u and v because u and v aren't adjacent to each other and they can't be adjacent to themselves which only leaves n minus 2 vertices in the graph for them to be adjacent to, all the vertices except for u and v. Thus, since in total they're adjacent to at least n minus 1 vertices, which is greater than n minus 2, that means they must have at least one common neighbor, which we're calling w. And thus, of course, that gives us a path connecting u and v, the path that goes from u to their common neighbor w to the vertex v. And so, whether the two vertices we pick from our graph are adjacent or not, the vertices must be connected, and so the graph is connected. So, we've proven this theorem if a graph with n vertices satisfies the condition that every two non-adjacent vertices in the graph have a degree sum of at least n minus 1, then the graph is connected. Now, we can go ahead and use this result to easily prove the first one that we mentioned. So we'll assume that our graph satisfies the hypothesis of this theorem, that it has n vertices and a minimum degree greater than or equal to n minus 1 over 2, and then we'll show that it must also satisfy the hypothesis of this theorem about the degree sum of non-adjacent vertices, thus the graph must be connected. So let's get to it. Once again, if we begin by taking two arbitrary vertices u and v from the graph that are adjacent, so uv is an element of the edge set, then of course there is a path connecting u and v, the path that goes from u to v. And so all that remains is to show that non-adjacent vertices are connected in the graph g. So if we have two non-adjacent vertices, u and v, in our graph g, what do we know about the sum of their degrees, the degree of u plus the degree of v? We would like to show, of course, that it's greater than or equal to n minus 1. If we can show that, then we'll be able to say that g is connected. But remember, since we're trying to prove this theorem, we're assuming the hypothesis of this theorem. We're not assuming the hypothesis of this theorem. 
So for starters, what we can say, since this is true in every graph, the degree sum of any two vertices must be greater than or equal to the minimum degree of the graph plus the minimum degree of the graph. Obviously, two times the minimum degree is the smallest possible number we could have when adding the degrees of two vertices in a graph. So we know this inequality is true about the degree sum of our non-adjacent vertices u and v, then we can apply the hypothesis of the theorem we're trying to prove, that the minimum degree of the graph is greater than or equal to n minus 1 over 2. Thus, the minimum degree plus the minimum degree must be greater than or equal to n minus 1 over 2 plus n minus 1 over 2 just replacing both of those minimum degrees with the quantity n minus 1 over 2. Then, of course, what's n minus 1 over 2 plus n minus 1 over 2 equal to? Well, that's equal to 2 times n minus 1 over 2, otherwise known as n minus 1. And so what did we just show? We just showed that the degree sum of any two non-adjacent vertices in our graph must be greater than or equal to n minus 1. So the degree sum of any two non-adjacent vertices in our graph is greater than or equal to one less than the number of vertices in the graph. So we can apply the theorem that we proved earlier to assert that indeed our graph G must be connected. And that proves our theorem. If G is a graph of order N with minimum degree delta of G greater than or equal to N minus one over two, then G is connected. And again, I previously did a lesson proving this result. So if you want to see a bit more of a detailed proof, check the description for a link to that lesson. I hope this lesson helped you understand how to prove this fun, sufficient condition for a graph to be connected. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.